God bless you, oh, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. And certainly we bless that wonderful name of him that does things well. Uh, certainly we bless him again for another day, another day's journey. And the old church used to say, I'm glad about it. And certainly we uh, want to greet each one of you in the marvelous, majestic, matchless name of him uh, who still sits at the right hand of the Father. Certainly to all of our New Hopians and to all of our uh, friends and family that shares with us uh, uh, during this uh, time each week, uh, certainly we are grateful uh, for you and certainly we bless you uh, just for doing that. Now, certainly I want you to just take a quick moment to call or text, the inbox, uh, uh, a family member, church member, and let them know that this uh, weekly uh, ministry here at the New Hope Baptist Church is on and that it would do them good, not only today, but in the days to come. Certainly, uh, we are praying for all of our sick, uh, bereaved families, and certainly those who are going through seasonal difficulties, and certainly we uh, are praying for those who are behind jail and prison walls, uh, those who are in rehabilitation and facilities, nursing homes, and certainly uh, those who are at home who are uh, dealing with um, different types of, of sickness that and diseases that got them at a disease. Uh, certainly we want you to know that not only you're in our thoughts, but you're also in our prayers. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we come just as we are, empty our pictures before Ford Fountain. God, we come in action and I will look on us again. Well, I will pity, I of mercy, I of compassion. Lord, we confess our sins that are ever before us. I said, I will just blot them out, God. We confess that we have fallen short, that we have done things contrary to your will and to your word. I ask God, you forgive us now. Oh, God, you said in your word that we confess that you are still faithful and that you are still just. Do for us, God, what we are unable to do for ourselves. Our faith continue to look up to thee. And that God, we praying now that thou would just look on us. Now, thank you again for this privilege of being able to talk to you. And God, you did told us that whenever we need you, that we can just call on you. God, we calling on you, not because you are a uh, God that uh, is hard of hearing, not that you're a God that they don't already know what our needs are, but God, we just know that you told us we can do it, and we just call and you on uh, this day, God, asking that I would remember us, that I would have mercy on us, that I would just have thy way. God, we just calling on you because we have not been able to find anybody else that can do us any, any good like you. God, use our strength. You are our hope. You are our refuge. Use our fortress. And God, we just pray right now that thou will not leave us and thou will not forsake us. Oh, God, we, we know that there's so much uh, going on in our land. Uh, God, we know that uh, dealing with the, the stress, dealing with the trouble, dealing with the anxiety, dealing with the ups and downs, dealing with the bustles and the hustles of this world. God, uh, sometimes it overwhelms us. But God, we just thank you that you have not forsaken us, that you have not turned away from us, that, that you are still there. And God, we just praying for help. We just begging God that thou would just help us. And thank you for uh, sending us our help, our friend, the Holy Spirit. God, pray that you just continue to cover us, continue to walk with us on this teaser journey. God, we just thank you that we are not in this by ourselves. You are our strength. Thank you for being our strength. And that God, you did say you are our light and our salvation. We don't have anything to fear. And God, because you are the strength of our life. Thank you, dear God, for being that light and darkness areas in our lives. Bless us now, God, those uh, who are going through seasonal sickness, bereavement, 
We're just going through the, the ever day of uh, challenges of life. And to God, I just pray that you would just speak comfort, speak healing, God, because we know that uh, it's in the blood of your son Jesus that uh, we got the power, that we got the victory, that there is life. And God, we just thank you for the gift that you so uh, gave to us, undeserving uh, creatures like we. God, we just thank you for the gift of just being saved. Thank you, dear God, for the gift of restoration. Bless us now, and we'll bless you back. We're praying for our entire church family. God, we're praying for the, the whole body of Christ. God, we lift them up now before God. We're praying for our world, our country, praying for our state, our city. God, we're praying for our county. God, just move, continue to bless, meet the needs of your people, not only financially, but spiritually, oh God. Bless now, God. Bless now. Oh God, just bless. If you bless, things will be well. God, if you just look, everything we'll be able to make it. Bless us now. God, we ask now that you come in the pressure of the Holy Spirit. Come now. Touch our spiritual ears that we can be able to hear, our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you have to say to us on this day. We ask now that you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus the Christ name, we ask it all. Amen. All right, God bless your heart. Thank you so kindly. I uh, know you got your Bibles already turned to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Um, we're dealing with uh, the three kinds of faith. We've dealt with dead faith. That's covering uh, verses 14 through 17. That's dead faith. Uh, then we dealt with last week, we dealt with demonic uh, faith. That's uh, verses uh, uh, 18 through verse 19, dealing with demonic, demonic faith. Uh, that's uh, once again that we dealt with that on on last week um, in James chapter two, and so today we want to look at uh, James chapter uh, two verses 20 through 26. Okay, we did. We want to deal with. Uh, a dynamic faith, okay? We're dealing with the three kinds of faith. Uh, dead faith, and, uh, and we know that uh, dead faith uh, in, entails uh, that of, um, of just having the knowledge uh, of, of God, and, and that's, that's, that, that's, that's really totally it, is just having the knowledge uh, ha has no kind of life, and uh, and then we dealt with um, demonic faith that goes a little bit further. It, it is that it, it has to do with emotion. It has to do with our intellect having uh, uh, the ability of, of of knowledge of knowing what God requires, uh, but still. Um, uh, uh, we, we dealt with that even uh, the devil, even the demons uh, knows the word. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> the sad uh, indictment upon it is that uh, um, the demons uh, takes it a little bit when it comes to God is that they have so much faith uh, in, 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 in God and in the word of God that they that they do something that a whole lot of believers don't even do is that the demons at least fear God, and uh, and you have you have some that are a part of the household of faith that don't even fear fear God, and so 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 you have demonic, you have demons of faith is that uh, they just believe. Uh, uh, on the intellect that they, 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 their faith has no deeds, uh, their faith has no, uh, no love in it, is that they don't believe that they can uh, be saved, um, that they have no saving faith. Okay, so let's look at uh, dynamic, dynamic, 
faith. That that's that that's a, that's a faith that uh, motivates. That's a faith that uh, that deals with the total uh, uh, of mankind. That that deals with our stability. That deals with our uh, development. Uh, it 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 is uh, that kind of faith that is real. Uh, it, it has power, comes from that word uh, uh, dunamis, a dynamite. That's what uh, Jesus said in the uh, second chapter of Acts, uh, no, the first chapter of Acts, when he says to his disciples, go into Jerusalem, uh, go, I mean, go into Galilee, and ye shall receive power. That, that, that word power comes from the Greek word the dunamis, that when we get the uh, the Greek uh, the English word dynamite, and you know what dynamite is is dealing with explosive, to set things or dealing with power. And so when we when we look at that word uh, uh, dynamite, is that we're talking about power, uh, talking about faith that is actually being manifest in what passed I'm glad you asked, and and a changed life, okay, uh, and a changed life. And so once, once, once our life has been changed, once there's been a transformation uh, in, our, the, in our lives that has occurred, then we have to, we have to, uh, we have to put that faith uh, into, into action. And, 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 and keep in mind, and I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's very important uh, for us to understand this kind of faith that... Um, that 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 James is actually uh, talking about, and and I don't I don't want I just want to refresh our our mind uh, about what we said about um, uh, and we love I love how Paul and James make a comparison uh, as they um, are both teaching about this subject of faith, and and uh, when, when you remember we said we said that um, Paul talks about uh, of faith dealing with um, uh, his audience and especially in the, uh, the church in Ephesus and and uh, he talks about them um, have to deal with the subject of since they have been since since they are saved is, is that is that many of those uh, 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 um, believers in Ephesus uh, were seeking to be justified by God, just by works, they felt like uh, that their works was good enough, and uh, they 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 they, uh, they 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 were stuck there uh, on that um, on that belief that in that second chapter of Ephesians, when you start reading verse eight through ten, is is that they felt like they they could earn their salvation just by being good. <laughs> Um, and and you'd be surprised of, of the people, even in our neighborhood, even in our community, even in in the church house, uh, who feel that they can earn their salvation just by being good. And all of us got some good neighbors, got some good relatives, got 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 some good friends, but they have not uh, accepted the reality of it. Is is that is that being good? Uh, uh, is not enough, okay? Okay, uh, cause cause he said uh, Paul and James argued the point that when they're dealing with faith, that's an action word. That's that's an action word. We 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 are not saved by our works, but because we are saved, we involve ourselves in work. Amen. Amen. We we involve ourselves. And work, and you ask, Pastor. I'm glad you asked. Are you listening to me? That works include the works of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, and and that and that's what that's what Paul uh, was arguing uh, his position uh, in that uh, tenth verse of the second chapter of Ephesians. Turn it when you get turn to it when you get a chance. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do what good works. We 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 we've been created in Christ Jesus to do good works, and that good works were prepared in advance for us. Is that whatever He has called us, whatever He has ordained us to do, is that before we uh, assign ourselves uh, 
to this work is that God already had called us to do this great work. And I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down because I don't want you to forget it. It's good to write it down. Is that good works are natural fruit or real saving faith in our lives. We, we, ought, we ought to want to produce uh, uh, good works. Our works that we do in the name of Christ Jesus ought to be to the best of our ability. We ought to not half-hearted uh, 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 give God. We, we ought to be 110%. We ought to give him more. Whatever we do in the name of Christ when it comes down to our, uh, 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 our performance, our works, our involvement in, 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 in kingdom building, it ought to be. We ought not attempt to do it. We ought not, you know, we ought to do it the wholeheartedly. Because if our works, listen to me, if our works is not showing evidence that we are doing it for the sake of Christ, is that we're doing it in vain. Whatever we do is that we are not doing it to, to be a show off, to get the praises, uh, the praises of man. Our work ought to be conducive of a godly conduct. Huh? We ought to do it out of love. Love for what? Not only for God, but for people. We can't do the work of God and leave out others, leave out people. Because in reality, is that, is that the church is in, is, is, is in the business of people. That's why he left the church in the world to reach unsaved individuals. So, so we have to ask ourselves when it comes to our faith, do we really have real faith? What are we becoming? How are we behaving ourselves when it comes to our, our faith as a Christian? Because real faith, when we talk, when, when we heard what I just said about fruit, is that is that is that is that is that real faith produces good fruit. Since we've been saved, since 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 we have acknowledge uh, since since we have confessed our sin since we say us we are saved is that what kind of fruit have we produced that is conducive to our calling that's good teaching about that pastor And that was one of the problems that the Jews had. That's one, that's, one of the, that's one of the problem that the early church had is, is, that, is, that, is that they was caught up in trying uh, uh, to justify their the salvation without uh, even putting in the work. And this is where this is where James is coming along. Not not that he's contradicting what uh, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, told the church in Rome and told the church in Ephesus. Paul talks about is that is that uh, is that since we are saved, those of us who are saved by faith. Is that is that is that we need to go a little bit further, and that's where our, our James picks it up and talks about uh, that we who are saved we must be working. And 
And that's what James talked about here, talking about real faith. So, so, so let's not us misunderstand uh, what James is talking about. Paul talks about Christian faith. James teaching about Christian faith, saving faith, since we are saved. So, look at, so let's look at what he talks about this dynamic faith in verses 20 through 26, okay? Listen to what he says in verse 20. Let's start it. He said, but are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without work is useless? Okay? Listen to what he says in the next... And in, in, in the next verse, he said, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up eyes at his son on the altar? We're going to get back to that. I'm just going to read the verses. He said, You see that faith was working with his work, and as a result of the work, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God. And it was reckoned to him as righteousness, as he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. James, you're using two characters in biblical uh, characters that, that, that is striving, uh, putting their faith into, into work. Then with the whole totality of man. He uses Abraham. Then look at the next verse. Is that he's using uh, 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 Rahab. Another biblical character. In the same way it was not Rahab the harlot. Who was justified by works when she received the messengers. And sent them out by another way. So he's talking about dynamic faith that, that includes what? Our intellect, our emotions, everything that consists of a man. And Abraham uses two, like I said, he uses two persons in the Bible to explain his point. That one is dealing with real faith at all. We know who Abraham was. Abraham was who? He was the father of the Jews. He, he used, he, when you kind of really look at these two uh, uh, persons, they, they come from two different, different nationalities, is that uh, um, Abraham was the father of the Jews, and when you kind of study it by Rahab, she was considered a Gentile. Another couple of difference about Abraham and uh, Rahab. A Abraham was considered a godly man. And James points out here that uh, 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 Rahab was a, was a holler. She was a prostitute. Are, are, are you listening to me? Abraham, uh, James says that Abraham was a friend of God. And when you study about Rahab, Rahab had belonged to the enemies of God. When you study the book of Joshua, when those, uh, when, when those spies came, so Moses sent out those, uh, those, 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 those spies, and, he, and, and she hid two of them, Joshua 
and her, okay? And so, so, so James, so James, James is, 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 is making a distinct difference between the two, even though he's dealing with a man and a female. <laughs> Are you seeing this? So, so, so you ask the question, Pastor, what is the message there? Is that, is ready, is ready, is ready in here? Is, is that both of them had faith in God and acted upon that faith? What did Abraham do? Is that, is that, is that he was willing to sacrifice what? His only son because God asked him to do it. Remember me saying a good working definition of faith is, is that if you want to really define faith, in which, you know, you can't really define it, but if you want something that is work that is workable, is, is that faith is saying, Lord, the answer is yes. Now what is the question? When you look at Abraham, Abraham, even though he took his son eyes of, to be sacrificed. He was not questioning God. He stepped out on faith. He said, "Me." He told the, he told his servant, he "said Me and my me and my son is going up yonder, are going to the mountain, and God will provide Himself a sacrifice." And even though when you look at that, it is that is that God had told him to go sacrifice his son Isaac. But Abraham put his faith into action when he said, the Lord himself, get that, the Lord himself, himself should provide a sacrifice. And because Abraham trusted God, since Abraham obeyed God, is that Abraham was not only blessed, but he was spared. Are, are, are you listening to me? That, that's, that's faith. If, 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 if he had just stayed there, where he were and did not go up to the Mount Moriah uh, uh, to offer up his son uh, Isaac as a sacrifice, it would just have been faith. It had just been dead faith. But dynamic faith causes us to act. It has to do with the total will of man. is to put it into action. Now think about Rahab. Think about Rahab. Rahab put her own life on the line to hide and protect the, these uh, two men of God that came into uh, Jericho. Even though the watchers had uh, seen these two men uh, come in that was considered spies, and, they, and, and these watchers, uh, these uh, may want to call them troops or whatever, that uh, uh, saw these two men and saw that they went to the house of Rahab. You may say that Rahab lied. That's not even up for debate. That's not even up for questions. Because uh, if the truth be told is that you don't know what you may do. <laughs> you may say not what you may not do or what you will do, but you don't know what you may do at that moment of intensity. At that moment that it causes for a life or death situation. But the point that James is making here, he's pointing out Rahab faith. Is, is, that, is that she had already heard about uh, uh, this God of Israel. 
how he, how he led them out of Egypt by his mighty hand, led them through the wilderness, how he opened up the Red Sea. She had heard about the word had got out prior to these men, these spies getting to Jericho. How Pharaoh's army drowned and how he took care of them 40 years in the wilderness. How he fed them. How he sustained them. How he worked miracles. How they closed and wear out. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, it was a lot of miracles that, that transpired uh, 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 those 40 years in, uh, in the wilderness. And one of those miracles that you don't hear uh, too many talks about and too many is aware of is that 40 years when, when, when those babies uh, are left out of uh, Egypt as babies, as little children, is, is that is that that there was there was no um, clothing department uh, 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 in in the wilderness that there was no Walmart <laughs> they couldn't go nowhere and do no shopping that that there was no uh, seamster there was nobody that was doing an alteration in the wilderness are y'all listening to me? Rahab had heard about the miracles of God, that those little babies that, that, that left out of Egypt, that as they grew, their clothes began to grow. That's a miracle. <laughs> if they had shoes, is that, is that, is that, if they had little baby shoes, infant shoes, is that, is that when they left Egypt, uh, is, is that as they grew older, their shoes grew. Clothes didn't wear out. Forty years wearing the same clothes, they didn't wear out. Babies' clothes grew just as they growed. So, so you heard about how God was taking care of them, and she knew that she, she knew that Jericho was no match when it came down to God. How he destroyed the other enemies that came up against uh, the children of Israel. So she put her faith into action. Oh, yes, she did. So what they did, when you look at Abraham and Rahab, is that they, they, they didn't just say, we believe everything we said uh, uh, that God said, and, did, and they didn't do nothing. No, they didn't do that. They acted upon their faith. Why, Pastor? Because they had dynamic faith. Even a prostitute was justified and considered righteousness before God. Get, get, get this new hope. Even a, even a prostitute, even a harlot was justified, was considered righteous before God because she acted upon her faith. What good is it? What good you to have a, a brand new automobile? What good is that car if you don't have a good battery? When your battery is dead, is your car is dead. Your car ain't going nowhere if that battery. What makes that car alive? I don't care how much, uh, how good that oil may be. I don't care. You may have some uh, fire stone, bridge stone. Uh, uh, I don't care how good them tires is. Uh, I don't care how new that car is. I don't care how old it is. If that car don't have a battery, it ain't going nowhere. What makes that uh, a car move, do what it's been designed to do, is a good old battery.
And that's what faith is. It works just like a battery. So real faith, dynamic faith, is faith when we put it into action, when we step out, when we step out, when we step out, when we step out, when we trust God, when we step out, when we don't have, when we, we don't have no questions about what God tells us to do. Or you listen to me, New Hope. We got too many Bible quarters and Bible carers, but it's not even believing in what they're reading and what they're carrying. Again, there is nothing we can do to save ourselves apart from Jesus Christ. We can't be good enough, nor can we work hard enough to save ourselves. And according to the word of God, we are saved by what? I'm glad you asked, Pastor. By, by, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and that's it. Don't, 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 don't try to add anything else to it. Let me say it again. is that we are saved by grace. Through faith in Jesus Christ, that's it. And so let me, let me share this with you, and I'm going to let you go for the day. Is that faith is not belief only. Believing is just part of faith. Then, 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 that, that, then that second part comes. Um, you got to, you got to uh, have a change of life. That's where that word re repentance comes in. And uh, then that third step is that calls uh, confession. Uh, dealing with confession of our belief, we got to open up our mouth, and that's what. And as I said this before, in one of our settings, that that's what's wrong with the. Uh, well, with the church today, I do believe um, is 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 that uh, uh, even here at, at the hope is that uh, many comes um, for the first time to Christ, even come for uh, recommitment and rededication, and uh, and and we 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 are guilty. We 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 take them on in, and they don't have anything. I, as a matter of fact, I do ask them, "You got anything? You ought to have something to say." You at least open your mouth and 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 say I, I, I I'm sorry. Con confession that 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 I think that's where we have lost some of the power and some of the authenticism of the of the church is that nobody want to say it and they not, there's no confession going on. That's good teaching right there, Pastor. We have to confess our belief in Jesus Christ. Even James said confession is good for the soul. <laughs> uh, confess, uh, James went a little bit for confess our faults to one another. That, 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 that's another teaching for another setting. Is that there's nothing wrong with saying publicly uh, uh, sometimes it does it do good to do it privately is, is that is that I'm sorry. Get it out. Get it, get, get it off you. Confession is good for the soul. How strong will new hope be? How strong will the body of Christ be if that be more confession? Lord, I'm sorry.
And then you got to believe in baptism. That's part, this part, of, this part of the salvation plan, baptism. I'm, I'm publicly uh, uh, a, a confession. I'm publicly acknowledging my, uh, my connection with Jesus Christ. I'm, 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 I'm too. That's what that word emerging uh, in the water. That, the, the, the baptism water does not save us. The only thing that saves us is the blood of Jesus Christ. Are oh, you listening to me? But the water baptism, it, 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 it carries a meaning. It's, it carries, it carries the, uh, the notation that I, I'm too is in uh, agreement. I, I'm too is dying. I, I'm too is dying in my sin. Not only do I just believe in Jesus Christ that he died, in the, but I'm too enjoying it in. My old self is dying. My old nature, my old habit is dying. Keep in mind what I said earlier. Water does not save us. The only thing that saves us is the blood of Jesus. But what does water baptism does, it signifies, it acknowledges our, our, our relationship, our agreement, our contract with Jesus Christ. Water baptism does not save us. I know a whole lot of folks. I know you all don't know, but I know, I know a whole lot of folks uh, uh, go in water baptism. Those saying that they go in as a dev or a dev let, then they come back, even come up out even worse. <laughs> yeah. So, so water, water does not save us, but uh, uh, but it 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 it, it civilizes. Even even you take for, for an example, a good example is this a communion table. You, you, you look at it more to it than just um, just a table. Um, even though we use it for communion, and but 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 you but you kind of look at it the the shape of it. It kind of puts you in the mind of a tomb. And 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 all of this has to do with. The symbolism of what it represented. We're not. We're not. I know we're not dealing with the bread, and but 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 when you look at how this uh, how this table is made, and 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 and, and all, all of this ties in with our belief and what Jesus Christ did for us. Okay. And so when, when, so when we go into the waters, you can kind of look at it as a pool. When we go in, it, 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 it's that it, it symbolizes that Christ, uh, he went in the tomb. And, and uh, when he came up, he came up the third day with a newness of life. So he gave us, he gave us, he gave us that opportunity to, to be able to share. And so when so, so, when, so when we're going to the water, not that uh, we, we, we uh, for our denomination, as far as we don't teach about teaching uh, about sprinkling, but I know there's come certain instances that a person is not uh, humanly capable of going into water, and, and it goes back to uh, even dealing with the Sunday school lesson. Uh, about the Ethiopian, um, uh, he, even though he wanted to be baptized, and, and um, uh, Philip baptized him. That 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 that, that that's uh, thank you, host. But that 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 has to do with our initiation <laughs> unto the family of God. That's what I was looking for. That baptism initiate us. It, it's just like it's just like any other. Uh, uh, organization or any other uh, fraternity or uh, uh, sorority is that you got to go through an initiation. You, you just don't be, just become a member just because you join. You, it, it, it's some stuff you got to go through. It's a process. Even on your job, you may you may you may you may you may know the work, but you got to go through some training. 
You, you got to go through uh, initiation. You got to go through uh, 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 just a process. Just, just, just keep that in mind. And so, so baptism is, is one of the initiation of us getting into the family of God. And if you, if you about past that, you really have not came through the proper, the proper way. <laughs> that's, that, that's good to you. I know it's heavy, but that's good teaching right there. So you got to believe in the process. And, that, and so that's what, that's what, that's what James was, uh, was talking about uh, when, when he talks about dynamic faith. And so um, those who think that faith is mer if it's just on the believing, they're misunderstanding the role of baptism and how it plays into our faith. And so um, baptism, um, it works, it's, it's important, and, um, and that we got to believe that we are not just, uh, we, we, we are not just saved by our faith. But, uh, but we have to believe in the work. Uh, I may deal with that. I may pick that back up next week because I think I need to be good, a little bit more clarity that, uh, dealing with baptism because uh, uh, it works. It's got to be a part of our um, uh, step, the process of um, having working or working faith, Okay. All right, let, let's, let, let, let's stop right there. I think I've given us a whole lot to chew on <laughs> uh, for, 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 for a day or two that is dealing with uh, real faith, that dealing with a dynamic, dealing with a faith that is, that is explosive in our works, not just by, uh, by mouth, uh, not just by us reading, not just having an intellectual uh, perspective of the word of God. We got to move from even the demons, even, even the demons uh, ha, ha, have uh, know the Bible, know God, the word of God. Uh, uh, and so, but they deal it on the emotionalism side. They did it on the intellectual. They don't, they, they, don't, they don't believe it to the degree of having uh, a saving faith that Jesus can save them. Okay? And so, so James talks about uh, having real faith that is uh, that 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 is uh, uh, dynamic, and just think about that word dynamic. Uh, that dealing with uh, dynamite. That, another word for dynamic is a dynamite. You ought, you ought to be explosive, explosive. Uh, you, ought, you ought to make a change. It ought to uh, you ought to make a change in your environment. Uh, your, your your works ought to speak for itself. Okay. All right, God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Please uh, share uh, uh, with uh, another uh, church member, another family, another friend about uh, this, um, uh, these uh, three kinds of faith. And I promise you, it will do you good, not only today, but in the days to come. Let us pray. God, we love you. Oh, how we magnify uh, your holiness. And thank you for saving us. Uh, right in the nick of time, thank you that you saw something in each one of us that we did not see in ourselves. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you, dear God, that you have, a, you have begun a work in us that it will not become complete until the day of our redemption. God, we pray that you continue to give us the boldness and give us a desire to not do our will, but to do your will. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for saving us. God, we just pray that you continue to lead and guide us to do the work that you've called us to do in these trying and privileged times. God, continue to undergird us. Uh, do for us, God, uh, what you did uh, for your servant Abraham. Continue to allow us to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you to God for the friend uh, and the person of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. That we're not in this walk by ourselves, but that, that you have uh, given us the Holy Spirit. And then, God, you did tell us that you are with us. And then you said through your son, Jesus, the Christ, that you also is with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And, but in the person of the, the son, that you said, uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you 
Thank you. Thank you for just uh, being with us now. And God, we're going to give you all the praise. In your son Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen and amen.